So up on the wall here, you can see, among other things, is some 2x6 cedar decking. This is uh, excess I had from last summer's project, where I redid my deck on the back of my house. And so um, I had a lot of extra wood, and uh, a lot of the cutoffs uh, made it into this uh, in-grain cutting board. And so I intended to use this glue up to uh, make a barbecue station that'll be on the deck. So this side is just for utility, and then there'll be actual uh, a little hole for a barbecue to go onto this side. But anyway, today's task is to get this thing flattened. As you can see, I've kind of already done it. But, you know, intros. You can do them later. <clears throat> so here's the slab. It's uh, three inches thick. Cedar. It's western red cedar, and it's just glued up. See there? They're like clamp, clamp marks from the PVA glue. And it's eh, kind of flat, but needs to be flatter. So here's the setup. I've uh, homed the machine and then moved it to this point uh, and uh, zeroed the work coordinates. And for full disclosure, I cut air for a good long time before I started cutting just to make sure that the G-code was good and that my bit had full coverage of the top of this block. This is probably the second pass and I was getting pretty comfortable so I <laughs> pumped up the z-axis offset to minus 0.1 inch down and I think in the end that was too aggressive either for this bit or this uh, feed rate and as you'll see in a minute it's the first time I've hit uh, the e-stop on my machine. I just didn't like the way the bit was sounding uh, and so I stopped it. And so I think it's related to the spindle power. The spindle's rated to two, three horsepower, 2.2 kilowatts. And, you know, I've used a handheld router that was three horsepower, and that thing is a beast. And so I'm not sure if this is actually three horsepower. My gut is that it's actually a little bit less than three horsepower. But nevertheless, here's the e-stop. And as you can see, the motion stopped and the spindle uh, just rolled to a stop. So, no harm, no foul. I basically restarted the machine in Mach 4 and then just took a much lighter pass. And as you'll see here, that little round, uh, I guess we'll call it a burn mark, was taken off on the next pass. So, just a gentle reminder that uh, I should take it a little more easy. So I flipped the piece over and I had to re-zero the work coordinates on this corner because I didn't have a stop, so I couldn't get the slab back in the exact same position. So that went, I think that went pretty well. Um, certainly flat um, and parallel. These clamps seem to do a pretty good job. Um, there's a slight tendency when you, you clamp pretty hard to actually lift up at this end. So it's kind of something you definitely have to watch out for. I used two of these guys on this end. And then uh, a spacing bar. This technically wasn't necessary, but it seemed to give a better clamp. So that's what I used. I think it's interesting how the, if you listen to the machine as it was going, since the grain patterns are so weird, you definitely get different tones as you go across the various patterns so it was hard to get a good read on how uh, well the bit was cutting based on sound but it's nice and flat and so now the task is to move on to something a bit harder <laughs> so I have these uh, uh, hardwood end green cutting boards that I'd like to flatten. So this is what one looks like uh, after the glue up. So it's pretty rough, There's glue everywhere. They're pretty flat, but they're not perfect at all. Um, 
and even after I sand them, they're nice and smooth, this one, but it's not dead flat. And so even if I put pressure on a corner, you'll see the other corner comes up really easily. And so that's the task at hand, is to flatten these guys and make the two faces parallel. And so we're going to use the same uh, bit that we've used last time, but we're going to change the knives. For some reason, this Amana manufacturer makes a second set of knives for hardwoods. And so this part number is an RCK457. Um, <laughs> these things are kind of a bit pricey, so they're about 20 bucks a piece, so it'd be $60 for all three of these. And uh, I'm not sure, you know, how, how legit these are in the sense that you know, my understanding was that MDF is a pretty abrasive and obnoxious material, and so any bit that could withstand MDF would probably be more than adequate for hardwood. But nevertheless, this is uh, what they've proposed we use, so I have them, and I'm going to give it a shot. And <laughs> maybe we'll be able to tell if it's marketing or something real. I guess ultimately you're paying for the accuracy and of this grind but yeah really makes me wonder anyway uh, that's what we're gonna try to do here so they give you this tool to uh, take the knives off I assume it's partly for convenience but mostly to limit the amount of torque you can put on the on the actual nut it's a Torx bit Anyway, I've marked the uh, bits that are, the, the knives, the points that are down, so that I'll know on reassembly if I want to reuse the same knife or move on to a new face. But anyway, as you go after them, it's decidedly <coughs> sharp, <laughs> sharp point at which they uh, loosen. So I think they do publish a spec for. Uh, for uh, the torque, but other than this tool, I have no means of of uh, getting it back to that place. So here's a close-up of these two knives. So the one on the right is the RCK457, which is intended for hardwood, and then this is the one for MDF. And as you can see, there's some kind of, I don't know, it's a black, I'm not sure if that's electroplating or something more fundamental to the the metallurgy. If we turn them over, you can see that the black oxide like continues. So these are two of the same uh, hardwood uh, knives and so there's uh, the flat side and so in this one the flat side is down and here the flat side is up and so this is the orientation that they're installed. So essentially the flat side uh, engages the material of the wood first. As you can see from the screws, there's no Loctite or any other substance on the threads. Nor or is there any in the uh, actual uh, bit itself. So kind of an interesting thing there. So hopefully you can see there the face there is beveled to match the knife and the fit is pretty precise from what I can see So yeah, it does make me wonder, I kind of want to do a little tramming test. I want to put this back in the spindle and see how flat we are to our existing uh, spoil board. Just a sanity check here. Just wanted to make sure that the knives went back in the right place. This looks pretty good. So yeah, here's the setup. Uh, I've got the board on its most stable face down 
and then uh, I've clamped using these clamps and there's two blocks in the back and one on the side and then uh, this board is here just to give me more clearance these are very close to the same altitude as this and so just wanted a little extra room all right here we go yeah yeah I don't know <laughs> you can definitely see this one is not flat got all the light coming in underneath there down here it's a lot better woo rough So I went super conservative here, so I was only going one thousandths down each pass, and it probably took me about twenty passes. I just uh, didn't know how the bit or clamping system was going to react, so I just took it easy. So here I've gone about eleven thousandths down, and I don't know if you can see it, super subtle. <laughs> Basically, there's a patch in the middle that's a little low. You really have to see the swirl marks from the tool. You can see it here pretty good. And then in the middle it disappears and then it comes back on the edge. Yeah. So hopefully you can see it's gotten a lot better over here. Still a bit of light creeping under right about there. So, getting a lot better. Looks like we managed to get it flat. Sweet. So, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I think I'll sand them uh, a little bit uh, and try not to ruin their flatness. Uh, just to get rid of the, the swirl marks. Probably a very high grit. Two, three, 300? 320? Something like that. Um... And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to try to do some other uh, fancy uh, CNC inlays in these. And so maybe that's for another video. Anyway, thanks for watching.